Good evening, everyone. It is Wednesday night, uh, just a couple minutes after 7 o'clock, and it is great to be able to connect with you digitally. And But we would really like to be able to connect with you more than just uh, this being um, uh, of you receiving what is being shared and discussed here. We would love to engage with you. And so we would love to engage with you through the comments uh, here on uh, Facebook or if you're watching this on YouTube through the, the chat feature. And we would love to be able to dialogue with you and uh, hear some conversation about things that God may be saying to you, uh, some things that really uh, impact you and touch your mind and heart as we go through tonight. Uh, but what an incredible opportunity it is to be able to continue to gather together. Even though we can in person, we're able to uh, meet this way and just want you to know how much uh, we miss you and mm -hmm. it is uh, definitely an ache within our hearts of not being able to see one another face to face but um, believing that as we look ahead that there is uh, maybe a little light at the end of the tunnel down the road and so as we begin to, to make plans and, and down the road, uh, I encourage you to be praying with us and for us uh, as we desire not only to be able to minister, but also to be able to keep each and every one of us in our community safe as, as we go forward. I um, want to begin this evening with a word of prayer and uh, just turning everything over to him and to be able to, to look to the Lord and to say, God, this is how much we really uh, need you and this is how much we love you uh, and want to be, wanting to be able to lift up every uh, need that is out there. So many different things. Um, my Siri's trying to wake up. I'm sorry. Uh, and I don't need her to. Uh, just uh, as we just uh, look to the Lord and just uh, ask him to touch. So many of you out there have uh, physical needs that are going on. Uh, continue to remember uh, many of those. Ann Withrow, uh, Tanya Bond, Tommy McGee. Uh, so many different things and so many different lives that are needing a touch of God. And so we just want to lift those up to him as we begin uh, this evening. And just trusting God to be able to do some great and mighty things. Oh, All right. Good. Well, let's pray. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you and we praise you that, God, that we are able to come and surrender everything to you and that, God, that we can look to you and to you alone and know that, God, that you see and know things uh, that we may catch us by surprise. God, they never take you by surprise. And so for that, God, we just continue to trust you. We continue to look to you. And God, I pray that as we study and as we look in, dive into tonight, that God, that you will lead us, that you will direct our thoughts and our hearts, and that God, that you will truly allow your word to be alive to us and alive forevermore. God, I pray that you will just touch each and every need that is uh, present here tonight, God, that of all those that are watching and listening, that Lord, that you will just touch in a physical sense God, those that need healing, that you will do some great and mighty things. That God, that for those that are needing financial provision, that God, that you not only will see them, but that you will provide in, in such a miraculous and supernatural way. God, I pray for those that have burdens in their minds and hearts, that Lord, that you will just speak peace, uh, that you will just give them that joy, and that Lord, that tonight as we look to you, that God, that we will be encouraged, that tonight that we will be challenged, and that tonight, that God, that we will grow as believers, growing closer to you and to be able to truly encounter you in a special way. God, we love you tonight. We praise you. Lord, I just pray for all of the healthcare workers, God, uh, all of those first responders that are uh, at the front lines, not just during this season, but during every day, and that, God, that you will protect them and keep them. Lord, I pray that you will just continue to touch all of those uh, around the world that are being impacted by the COVID virus. God, I pray that you will just heal, that you will protect, and that you will allow there to be a, a re physical recovery in people's lives so that, God, that we're able to look forward and experience a, a, a an economic uh, recovery, able to experience a life recovery as we go forward. God, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, just If you would, just open your Bibles up to uh, the book of John, John chapter 21, and uh, uh, trying to, uh, sorry, trying to uh, uh, <laughs> share our, our post tonight. We and have our, multiple screens uh, going on at one time because Pastor and I like to see when you talk while we're talking. That way if any uh, comments or questions come up that we can uh, try to answer those questions yeah. if at all possible. So um, I was trying to pull that up. So that's what <laughs> that's what we're trying to do. So to give you a little idea on that side of the screen, what's happening on this side of the screen? Because you may be thinking, "What in the world 
are they doing? Mm-hmm. They need to get it together. Yeah. And so it's great to see some of you guys. We are able to watch some of those comments. So it's great to see Susan and Tommy and Betty and, and, and many of you that are already logging on I see tonight. Catherine and Tanya on yeah. there. And, and so uh, just continue. And we would love to engage with you in that way. Uh, but in John chapter 21, uh, we I want to look at verse 15. And this, uh, see, this passage, of course, this is the last chapter of the book of John, and so the last chapter of the Gospels. And we find that this is picking up, of course, uh, after the resurrection, but before uh, the ascension. And so this, this is part of the events that Jesus was appearing before the disciples and ministering to them. And in John chapter 15, John chapter 21, verse 15, uh, this is what uh, we, we find. It says, So that when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, don't you love that he knows our name? He, he knows who we are. He calls us. And, and I love that. We see that in this, in this, in this narrative that uh, Jesus gets very specific with Peter. Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, Feed my lambs. And he said to Peter again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to Peter, Tend my sheep. And he said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to Jesus, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Most assuredly, I say to you, Jesus continues, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. And this he spoke, signifying by what death he would glorify God, And when he had spoken this, Jesus said to Peter, follow me. Uh, One of the the questions and the things that we, Tina and I, continually in our relationship and marriage, there'll be the common question or uh, a common question that gets asked, uh, do you love me? Uh, He's saying that I'm the one that asked the common question. And I'm so giggling that he's bringing that up because as I was preparing for this this evening, I read it and I was like, Oh, wow, Jesus, this sounds just like Adam and I. (laughs) Yeah. Because Adam will pass, well, I'm going to call him Adam right now because he's a husband. Adam will say, yes, I love you. And I'll look at him again. I'll be like, do you really love me? (laughs) And usually I'm like Peter. I get perturbed somewhere in this conversation. I was like, you don't believe me that I love you. And so I'll reaffirm once again, yes, I love you. Well, I usually ask about three times, just like Jesus. That just means I'm a little more Christ-like than you realize. <laughs> and I'm more like Peter. So, uh, so we learn all sorts of new things in Bible study tonight. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, but we, I recognize that. And, and of course we, we laugh and obviously that is part of that question and, and, and that affirmation. But I, I guess in just a, a real sense, one of the things that we strive to do and, and, uh, I encourage, uh, for all of the married couples that are out there, one of the things that we're encouraged to do is to, to go back and to, to do our first works over again. So one of the questions that I always ask for married couples is what do you do to continue to show your spouse that you love them? Uh, what were those things that you did when you were uh, dating and courting, uh, whether it's been notes or flowers or date nights and, and going out? Obviously, you can't do that right now, but uh, I actually saved a post today of, of, of uh, date, what date nights look like in terms of during the virus and things that you can do in terms of watching a movie at home and, and things like that. And, and so I encourage you to continue to be able to uh, answer that question of do you love me and 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 let that be present uh, between our uh, between spouse between husbands and wives and, uh, but as we reflect on that I, I chuckled do, like Tina at that question but uh, kind of diving in there's several observations and several kind of thoughts that I want to expound upon as we look at this interaction between Jesus and Peter and and the first thing comes in that very first question that Jesus asks he doesn't just ask do you love me but he asks in verse 15 do you love me more than these this 
is, uh, reflects a comparison who, Jesus, who Peter is with. Peter is with the disciples. And, and so as we reflect upon the disciples that are present here in this scene, uh, Jesus is definitely drawing Peter to this. And we think that that comparison thing is, is a negative thing, but there is a reason that Jesus is making this connection. In fact, it is very reminiscent and reminding us of a conversation between Peter and Jesus the night of the Last Supper. And in fact, uh, it, it, during the, the Passover meal in John chapter 13, uh, Jesus, Jesus is talking to the, uh, to the disciples there, and he's already identified Judas as the betrayer, and he's talking about being, God being glorified in him. And, and in verse 36, uh, Peter says to Jesus, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus answered him, where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you shall follow me afterward. But Peter says to Jesus, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for your sake. And I want to pause right there. I'm going to read verse 38 in just a moment. But understand the context of this conversation. Jesus is talking to all the disciples. You you cannot go where I am going, but there will come a point in time later. And and Simon Peter, when he's looking at Jesus and saying, he's saying, I will lay down my life. He's making this a very personal thing. The the insinuation here is that they may not love you enough to lay down their life, but I love you enough. I'm willing to lay down my life for you. And so I should be able to go with you wherever it is that you're going. And so automatically in this this Last Supper scene, Peter is drawing this comparison. He's making this connection. And Jesus in verse 38 rebukes him. He says, will you really lay down your life for my sake? Because most assuredly I say to you, the rooster will not crow until you have denied me three times. And so quite a sharp rebuke by Jesus to Peter in that scene of letting Peter know that, hey, not only do I hear your heart, but I, not, I know what your heart really is. And I know what is about to take place. And as much as you profess that you love me more than these, that you're willing to lay down your life, I know that that's really not going to be the case. And so now we fast forward to this final scene, if you would, between Peter and Jesus. And and Jesus is kind of revisiting, do you really love me more than these? And it becomes a very pointed time and a very pointed moment of really do you love me more than these? And it reminds me even that Peter did deny Christ three times. And so here it is, Jesus asking Peter once again three times, Do you love me? And that first question, do you love me more than these? And so what is great about this scene, I I think it's it's an opportunity of redemption that Jesus is offering to Peter. An opportunity to be able to reflect on and to be able to say, this is what I've learned or this is what I've grown. And that, that Peter in this moment is able to move beyond the failures of the past and to move yeah. beyond the failures of denying Christ. And so now he's getting the chance at redemption, that second chance to be able to say, yes, Jesus, I love you. Uh, and I, and this affirmation that Jesus gives to Peter um, is a reminder that Jesus does not define us based on uh, those past failures, but he rather he allows us to be able to look at our circumstances and to be able to have the opportunity to make things right and to be able to reconfirm or reaffirm our love and our commitment to him, even though we may have fallen short in the past. Yeah, when I when I was reading Jesus asking uh, at this point in time his name Simon um, and he, he always refers to his dad you know Simon son of John so he wanted mm-hmm. to make sure that Peter was remembering his identity of who he is he wanted to make sure he was remembering his identity of, of his heritage and when he asked him the question do you love me more than these I I'm fairly certain that he was referring to the other disciples Mm -hmm. that are there. But initially when I went back to read that today, um, I had this overwhelming thought of, um, did Jesus just mean the people there? Because they had, um, Peter, Simon Peter, Peter had been hanging out with his disciple friends. They were there. Uh, near the shore, they were there uh, near their boat. He gets inside of his boat. He goes out to get in the boat, and he says, I'm going fishing, and everybody else is going with him um, at that point in time. So he's going back to the familiar. Mm -hmm. 
And then they meet Jesus uh, on the shore in the morning, and uh, Jesus has a fish fry ready for him. He's frying up bread. I mean, Jesus not, knew how to do hoe cakes. I mean, <laughs> come on now. I was wondering if it was fried cornbread or whatever. And fish, he, it was a fish stick for breakfast kind of meal with Jesus. And I had to stop and think today, Jesus, was it just about when you're asking, do you love me more than these? Was it just about the people or was it all inclusive of, was it about the people? Was it about the, the food? Was it about the profession of, of fishermen? Because he takes him on this journey that is off of the sea into this picture of land with shepherds and sheep. Mm -hmm. So he keeps asking him this question because I think he's taking Peter on this journey of I'm doing more than just transforming your name, Peter, but I'm transforming your desires of where you're going to work. I'm transforming your um, community of who you might be with. I'm event eventually going to transform your taste buds because we know down the road in Acts, Peter has this encounter later about food. So obviously food is present <laughs> in, in Peter's life. And so I just had to stop and wonder um, how many times is Jesus asking us, um, do we love him more than these? What and who are in our life that Jesus is going to say, am I number one? I want you to stop. And I really want you to consider, do you love me? I'm not saying you can't love those others, uh, the other these but do you love me? Mm -hmm. I want to know you love me more. As Willie and Lupe would say, mas. <laughs> I want to know you love me mas. More than anything. More than anyone. And so as we answer that question, I think that it has to, we have to make sure that that remains a a question that is between us and the Lord and that it is not the answer to that question is not based on comparing our love for God to other people that while there is that very pointedness that Jesus kind of directs Peter because he's wanting that reminder to be there the reality is is that if we find ourselves comparing ourselves to others in terms of our relationship with God we will ultimately be blinded. We will be blind to um, our future failures because we're too busy looking at other people rather than watching the, the path that's in front of us. Mm -hmm. And we'll also, we'll be, by comparing ourselves, we will very easily find ourselves magnifying our past failures because we're so focused. We, we reflect upon things that we did or did not do and we compare that to other people. And both of those are, are unhealthy and they are unscriptural. And so what God wants us to make sure that we are doing is saying that we're answering that question as, we, as God searches our heart, as the Holy Spirit speaks to us and searches us, that we're able to come before him and say, yes, God, I love you more than anything. I love you more than any of these other things in, in my life. And that we're able to say, yes, God, I'm putting you first and foremost. And, and what an incredible opportunity that we have during this season when a lot of other things that normally compete for our love and affection and attention have been stripped away. Uh, there is no favorite restaurant to go sit down and eat at right now. There's, there's, no other, uh, there's no sporting events to go sit and watch in a stadium with. And so all these other things start to get stripped away. And all we have to be able to do is say, God, do I really place you first? Because I challenge us, if we are unable to place God first in this season of our life, mm -hmm. then what's it going to be like when all these other things come flooding back in? And so let us use this as an opportunity for that reprioritization that God wants us to make. I, uh, with various governors, including our own, um, releasing their thoughts about reopening things, just as a confession, a little anxiety came up within me of um, the thought of, I'm not quite sure if I, I want things to reopen. Please don't. Please fill my heart. I, I want to gather back together and worship. 
That's not what I mean. I mean, this season has afforded an opportunity um, to try to reprioritize and mm -hmm. to um, pause with Jesus on the shores of our life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I definitely don't want to go back to being so um, busy in the regular business of life that I'm not hearing Jesus continually ask me, do you love me? Mm -hmm. That I'm not hearing him tell me, hey, I have some fish and chips <laughs> over here for you. Um, I, I just really want to be cognizant of that in this, as we're starting to enter right. a little bit of a new wave of the season. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have to go back and we really don't need to go back. Kind of like Peter had gone back to fishing, mm -hmm. Jesus was giving him an opportunity and telling him, nah, it's going to be different. Yeah. And different is okay. Different's not bad. Different is okay. And I, I think that could be applied to our lives right now, mm -hmm. that even right. as we move forward, it's going to be different. Mm -hmm. And and I think if we look at it as a gift from the Lord, the different can be good and it mm -hmm. can be okay. Um, if we right. embrace that and it can be a new adventure, maybe a, a new ministry mm -hmm. or, or something fresh mm -hmm. that we're going to be doing with the Lord and um, just really communing with him in a yeah. good way. Another point, the second point that I want us to kind of look at is in asking this question, uh, Jesus asking Peter, do you love me? It's interesting to know, and I've shared this before, that the original language, the Greek, is much more specific than what we get in the English language. And so, hence, that's one of the main reasons why we have different translations is because the Greek can be interpreted based on context and there's different meanings uh, for words. Uh, love is one of those examples. Uh, there's, I believe, four different words in the Greek for love, and uh, they all mean this in terms of get translated the same in our, in our scriptures. And, and this is one of those passages where we actually find two different verbs used in the original Greek for love. In fact, the first two times that Jesus asks Peter, do you love me? He's using the verb agape, which is that unconditional, sacrificial kind of love. The agape love. That's not what Jesus is asking Peter. Do you love me unconditionally? Do you love me willing to sacrifice? Do you love me to that point? But in those of those first two conversations, Peter's response is a different form of love. He uses a different verb. He uses a phileo verb, which is a brotherly love. And so I find it interesting that, uh, that Jesus is asking, do you love me just fully uh, in a fully sacrificial, selfless way? And Peter's responding, yeah, I love you like a brother. And that's really not the question that Jesus was asking. So when it comes to the third time, the third question, it's like Jesus kind of finally gives, gives in to Peter and says, okay, well, if you're not going to meet me at loving me agape uh, unconditionally, then I'll meet you and say, will you love me? Do you love me? And that third question, that third time that he asked the question is a phileo. Do you love me in that brotherly love way? And of course, Peter responds, yes, I love you in that brotherly way. And, and I think that what we see here is this, this understanding of going back to reinforce the conversation that we just had of, of to, you know, how uh, fully do we really love the Lord? Are we still trying to say, God, I, I love you from arm's length, or do I love you as a, a, as a brother, or do I love you in that sacrificing, selfless, uh, unconditional way? And that's what God calls us to, and that kind of sets the tone even mm -hmm. as we get into these last couple of points. Yeah, I, I wonder... Um, how often, like Peter, we don't stop and ask for Jesus to really explain what he means. Maybe at this point in time, this is pre-ascension, pre so this is pre the point of the followers of Christ being in the, um, up, the upper room for 10 days praying. So potentially it's pre the point of Peter's full conversion um, in having his, you know, post-resurrection mm -hmm. conversion with the Lord. Um, so I don't know if Peter's hearing Jesus, but I don't know if he fully understands him. 
And I um, wonder how often we hear the Lord, whether it's we hear him in uh, his, his word as we're reading the word or we're hearing him in the uh, songs, worship songs, or we're hearing them by listening to a sermon or something. We're hearing the word, but we don't always understand what Jesus is saying to us. I think it would have may have been a good idea um, had Peter looked at Jesus and said, what are you talking about, Jesus? Can you explain that a little more? I don't know why he didn't. I'm not judging why he didn't. But I think we could learn something from Peter here and begin, don't just assume that we know what Jesus is saying to us when he's asking us a question. Begin to really lean into him and go, okay, Jesus, can you give me a little more clarity? Can you explain this to me? Can you send someone along or give me a tool that helps me really understand what you're asking? Because I don't want to be quick to answer you and it really not be the answer that you're really, really desiring from me. I, I, I mean, Jesus would have known that Peter was going to say, yeah, I phileo you. Yeah, I phileo you. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, it's kind of like you and I. If I'm asking you several times, apparently, <laughs> apparently I'm wanting a particular response. But like in good Peter form, you don't, you have no <laughs> idea. It would probably help you out if I it really explained. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it could also help you out if you ask me, now, Tina, what, what are what you, talking you about? really <laughs> ask, what, what are you really getting to? So I think that it would behoove us, we would be wise if we would begin to ask the Lord, Lord, what is it you're really wanting from us? Um, how do you want me to love you? Mm -hmm. Not, do I love you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Maybe Peter could have said, well, how do you want me to show you that I love you, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so. well, and I think that Jesus actually uh, partially answers that question, not maybe explicitly, but it's definitely the response that Jesus gives to Peter in this conversation. Every single time, it's some form of, of feed my sheep or, you know, tend to my sheep or feed my lambs. And so when we see this, the, the heart of the passage that we see here really lies between uh, Peter's love for Jesus and the command for him to go and to feed Jesus' sheep. And, and in fact, revisiting that same uh, Passover supper, that same last supper in John chapter 13, if I back up a couple of verses from what we read earlier, in verses 34 and 35, this is the new commandment that Jesus is giving to the disciples. He says, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. And by this, you will know that they will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And so here it is, I believe, that part of this relationship and this interaction is Jesus res reminding Peter that this is my commandment. You've got to keep that commandment of loving one another and tend to and to feed my sheep and to put that love into practice by, by, by feeding and by nurturing and caring for uh, the sheep of Jesus. It, it doesn't, Jesus doesn't just show up to Peter and say, oh, here are the people, here are the sheep, and I would just, you know, here they are, but rather there's this instruction, this command uh, that Jesus is giving him to take care of them to love them, to love the sheep as Jesus loved them. And it is here that we are reminded, of course, of what Jesus ultimately does to, uh, to love them, not only in appearing, but ultimately, of course, uh, dying. I, I love it. Jesus never does. He never asks us what he's not willing to do. He, he had already modeled it. He just modeled it. He had fed them. Mm -hmm. He does not have this conversation mm -hmm. until he feeds them first. Mm -hmm. And so as much as we want to show the love of Jesus mm -hmm. to people, we better help meet their physical need right. first so that they'll pause long enough to listen to us. So Jesus had already modeled mm -hmm. what to do. Mm -hmm. You know, he wasn't just, I, I, I wonder how many time, times mm -hmm. when he's saying, feed my sheep, feed my sheep, take care of my sheep. Mm -hmm. He's talking about, I want you to do that for their bodies, their souls, 
and their spirit. Right. So there's this three time interaction, mm -hmm. and he knows that we right. are three a three layered being of body, soul, and spirit. So he knows that, hey, I want you to feed them to help take care of their body. I want you to feed them to help take care of their soul. I want you to feed them to help take care of um, their spirit. And I love the fact that Jesus Jesus does what mm -hmm. he's telling, telling right. Peter to do. That's right. And so, so many times we as believers, and even as a church, that's part of that desire is to be able to say that, you know, if you want someone to know, and in our case, the community or a world to be able to know that God loves them and that we love them, that we have to demonstrate that love. It has to be more than just saying it. It has to be more than just the words. And we see that in uh, the instructions to tend or to feed uh, the sheep. Uh, we see that in Jesus feeding the disciples here on the beach. And we need to be able to make sure that we are a part of it and, and through uh, and, and not just as a church, but even us as individuals that we demonstrate it in such an incredible way. Um, and, uh, and, and so but I want to kind of wrap things up and finish things up with this kind of these last couple of verses. Verse 18 sometimes maybe if you first read it may not really uh, understand what it is until we get to verse 19 and it kind of explains in that when he when Jesus is telling Peter that when you are old you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This is a direct foreshadowing of, of the death of Peter that ultimately Peter is going to be crucified but Peter uh, what we what we know is that Peter does not want to be uh, crucified in the same manner. He feels like he's unworthy to be uh, crucified in the same manner that Jesus was. And so ultimately that he is crucified upside down. And, and it is this direct uh, prophet, prophetic word that Jesus is telling to Peter that, I mean, we have to put ourselves in Peter's shoes and understand that, okay, Jesus is telling me that there's going to be this, this crucifixion, there's going to be this, this dying that I'm going to have to do and uh, that, that, you do not, uh, that you do not wish. And, uh, and what we become reminded, though, is this, as the good shepherd, Jesus was willing to lay down his life for the sheep. And, and so there is this direct connection and correlation that if we really are going to love one another, and we're really going to love Jesus, then there's that ultimate uh, commitment that we're making to be that sacrificial Love that God was initially asking Peter about, that agape love that is, uh, is uh, self-sacrificing, that is unconditional. And his command is to be able to follow in his own footsteps to Peter. Say, you know, just as I have been crucified, you are going to be carried to a death that you do not wish, uh, but follow me. And we know, of course, Peter does. Peter does. And, and we have to be reminded here that you know, to love Jesus is to, is to know Jesus and to be able mm -hmm. to commit to him. And we can't just say that, God, I know you up here, but God, I love you. And I love you here. And when we love him here, uh, we're, we're going to know him and that we're going to be led by him to be able to have that kind of sacrificial love that mm -hmm. Jesus is talking about with Peter here. Yeah, I love... You know, earlier you referenced back to the, the Last Supper and um, Peter saying, hey, I do want to follow you. Mm -hmm. And Jesus saying, you can't follow mm -hmm. me. It's not a, I mean, he tells him you're mm -hmm. going to deny. But at that point in time, Jesus had not, uh, Jesus, the, the love of God had mm -hmm. not really been opened to mm -hmm. all mankind yet. Uh, the the sacrifice on the cross had to happen for um, then the spirit of Jesus to come and really dwell inside of us. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just see the encounter just a few days prior to this, where after resurrection, we see Jesus, um, the word of God says he breathes on them mm -hmm. and they're filled with mm -hmm. the, the spirit at that point in time. So Jesus knew that the... The disciples, including Peter himself, would need the indwelling love of Jesus, love of himself, not just on the outside but on the inside, to empower them to to be able to follow like the Lord was asking um, them to follow, mm -hmm. and and also to lead. Mm -hmm. And so um, I love that God put Peter mm -hmm. on pause. A few weeks prior to this moment, mm -hmm. and then it's like we well, fast forward, and Jesus goes, "Okay, now, now I've died on the cross. 
-hmm. Now I've conquered death. Now I've come back to life. Now you're you're ready to love me on your terms right now. Mm -hmm. It's going to get bigger and better and deeper and wider. But now, now you're ready. The way is made for you really to follow. Mm -hmm. That's right. I, I went back and I looked up when um, Jesus uh initially called Peter. He never initially called him to follow. He's just like, oh, come <laughs> on. Come. Mm -hmm. But there was a process. Then the desire within Peter mm -hmm. grew to follow. And when he wanted to Try. follow, Jesus says, you're not ready. But then we go forward a little more and he goes, okay, I've made the way. Mm -hmm. And you're finally ready. You're primed. And you're ready to follow me. And I want to encourage us tonight. Sure. Because sometimes, see I don't know if on that side you can feel the sweetness mm -hmm. of Jesus. But I feel the sweetness <laughs> of Jesus in the room. Sometimes we might get frustrated with God. And God, why won't let you let me do this yet? And Jesus says, just hold on. You're not ready just yet. But there comes a point in time. Where Jesus will open the door and he will look and he goes, now's the time. Follow on. Let's go and get this done. Because it's not too many days after this that they're going to have the, the Pentecost outpouring. Sure. And who's the first one to stand up mm -hmm. and share publicly the love of Jesus? Peter. Peter. That's right. Peter. Don't let us get impatient with the Lord when he says no. Because there will be eventually a point in time where he'll say, okay, go. Mm -hmm. So his no may not be a definite no. It may just be a wait. Wait for my love to be outpoured into your life or poured out into your life enough where you are ready to love me in return, love others in mm -hmm. return, and follow me with all your mind, body, soul, and strength. Because just like Jesus may not have said, follow me, when he called Peter. And just like that scene in the Last Supper, in that upper room, when they were sharing that Passover meal. Peter, was Peter remember, Peter told Jesus, I'm going to go with you wherever you go. And Jesus says, no, you can't go with me where I'm going. And he's like, I will lay down my life. You know, and here it becomes full circle. Because here at the end of this scene, when Jesus reminds Peter or lets him know, hey... You are going to be following me in the same manner with which I have just died. And he concludes it with this command at the end of verse 19, follow me. This invitation from Jesus to be able to, for Peter to be able to do everything that he had proclaimed earlier, <laughs> everything that he had jumped impulsively to say, yes, here I am. I mean, I love Peter. He's impulsive. He's a man of action. And I love that. But in this moment, it's like this declaration by Jesus into Peter's life. Now. Now is that time. Now you are ready. And let's go change the world. And wow. that becomes a powerful moment, I believe, of really launching Peter into this new season of his life. And that's the reason when we read the New Testament, we don't look at and, and we don't have to define Peter by all of the mistakes and the failures uh, and the shortcomings and the, the times the impulsiveness got him into trouble. Uh, but rather we define and look to Peter based on this call, this command, this recognition by Jesus that now is the time for everything that you've been saying that you want to do, now you're ready. And I pray and believe that for you and I, that we are able to say, God, when that time is right, that we are ready. Because a, uh, we can have all the words of love and intention all we want to. Uh, but until they are matched with a life of love and commitment to the Lord, a love for one another, then ultimately we will find ourselves not yet quite being ready. Yeah. But So let us yearn. Let us be able to say, listen for that, the words of the Lord to say to us, Follow me. I wonder in this season, I'm sitting here listening mm -hmm. and in my spirit, I'm just imagining and wondering if this season of pause in our life um, has been a readying mm -hmm. season. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, 
in my heart, I'm sitting here really asking the Lord inside going, oh God, what have you been preparing us for? In what manner are you preparing us so that we can follow you? Mm -hmm. And I don't know, but man, it's like my little spirit man imagination mm -hmm. is running wild in this anticipation of, oh, Jesus has got goodies. And I'm not talking about goosebump kind of things. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about some really wonderfully um, kingdom impactful things That's right. that I believe that the Lord has been using this season and is going to continue to use this. He wants us, those of, who, those of us who've developed better habits with him and been more intentional with him, he wants those things to continue. Mm -hmm. Just like he wanted those things to continue with, with Peter. He That's was right. saying, these things have got to continue. The, the, this love thing, this it's got to go forward. Um, this whole feeding thing, this whole uh, taking care of kind of thing, it's got to move forward with us as you um, as you follow me. And I just feel I just feel very strongly in my spirit tonight that we need to just begin to thank the Lord. Mm -hmm. God, we don't see it yet, but Lord, we're gonna follow you. Lord, we don't know exactly where you're going to take us in this journey. But Lord, in our lifetime, Lord, let us follow you. Mm -hmm. Lord, I, I don't know what it's all going to mean. I don't think Peter really knew what it was all going to mean when Jesus was foreshadowing his, his death and how he would die. But it, it didn't matter at that point in his journey. He is just ready to follow. So I have to ask us tonight, mm -hmm. are you ready to follow Maybe you're out there on the other side of this camera tonight, and maybe you aren't a believer. You acknowledge God. You say he's real. You really don't understand because you don't have full relationship with him, but right there where you are, you're feeling that tug at your heart. It feels like your heart is pounding out of your chest. And you're wondering, is, what, is this a panic attack or what? Mm -hmm. It's not a panic attack. It's a God's love mm -hmm. encounter. And he wants you just to say, hey, God, I need your love. Try. I want you to forgive me for all the screw-up stuff I've done. And I want you to come into my life. And I want to love you back. Just like Peter said he would love you. And Jesus, I want to follow you. That's as, as simple as it gets. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. Doesn't have to sound all priestly. Just that simple. Jesus, I need your love. Try. Jesus, forgive me. And I want to follow you. Maybe you are a follower of Christ and You've been a disciple, just like Peter was a disciple. But you've kind of gone back and forth. Maybe you've denied him sometimes. <laughs> Maybe mm -hmm. you wanted to throw in the towel. Maybe you didn't know left from right. Maybe you were following him, but then you went back to doing your old jobs. It wasn't that it's sinful, but you've just gone back to the familiar. And tonight is just a... Time for you to go and meet him on the shores. He's got some fish and chips waiting for you mm -hmm. that he just wants you to feast on. That's right. And all you have to do is tell him, Jesus, yeah, I still love you. That's right. So I want to pray with you today. And no matter where, no matter where you are in that spectrum, yeah. just call upon him. As we yes, make the commitment Jesus. to the Lord, that, yes, Lord, we love you. We love you in that agape way, that yes, sacrificing, no strings attached, self-sacrificing kind of way. Sure. That, God, we're placing you first. And that, God, no matter where it is that you're calling us, that, God, we're ready to be led. And, God, we want to be ready when those moments come as we completely surrender everything to you. 
So will you just let me pray with you today? God, I thank you and I praise you. God, for those that are watching tonight and they're feeling, God, their, their, their hearts beating out of their chest, as Tina said, that, God, those encount, that encounter with you, that, God, that I'm so thankful that you've shown up tonight on this Wednesday evening to meet with us, no matter what's going on in our life, that you've come to meet us in this moment, in this way, that, God, that we can call on the name of Jesus and that, God, that as we call on the name of Jesus, that, Lord, that as we just tell you, God, that we're sorry and that as we come commit and pledge our life to you, that God, and as we invite you into our lives to be our Lord and to be our Savior, that God, that your word declares that you are faithful and that you are just and that there's nothing that bars us or prevents God, and that God, that you are ready and willing and you are faithful to do just that, to not only forgive us, but to come in and to be our Lord and Savior. And so God, for those tonight that may be declaring that prayer, God, I pray that you will just fill that room where they are. And God, for others, that Lord, that are needing to refresh their commitment to you, that God, for needing to be able to place you first or maybe needing to refresh that that passionate zeal and love for you, that agape love for you, God, let us answer and God, let us be able to say, God, yes, here we are. And that God, for others that are needing to be able to make the declaration to answer the call to follow you, no matter where it may be, to follow you and loving one another, to follow you and and letting your light shine in, in, in the world around us, God, to follow you, no matter where that path may take us, God, I pray that right now in the name of Jesus, that God, that you will, oh Lord, equip and that you will empower, God, each of us to be able to put your, uh, the love that we have for you into action, not only as we love you, but as we love one another. And God, so that others will know who we are and that we are defined by that love that we have one for another. God, we love you today. I pray blessings upon all of those that are watching and listening here tonight. God, we just... Uh, ask for you to cover and lead and guide and direct. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for uh, spending your Wednesday evening with us tonight. We, again, we would love to be able to engage with you. Maybe you prayed tonight and you would like, uh, we would love to be able to hear uh, maybe a way that this message or this conversation has touched you. If you encountered God in any way tonight, send us a private message and we would love to be able to dialogue with you. Uh, you can do that right there on the church Facebook page and we'd love to be able to connect. We love you bunches and uh, uh, we'll look, we look forward to seeing you right back here at 11 a.m. on Sunday morning as we uh, worship the Lord together on uh, live on YouTube and Facebook. Yes. So, and we Stephen, love you, family. And Steve and Freda, we love Wednesday nights also. We're loving this. So <laughs> there will be no going back to normal, so to speak. We're trying to figure out what that looks like. But God bless you, and we'll see you next time.